beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed before you take any action, before the fasting, before the prayer, before the charity, before the traveling for ministration, before doing whatever you do, get back to your closet and when you are in his presence, ask these three questions. Do I truly love Jesus? Am I motivated by my love for Jesus or my desire to be successful or my desire to be famous? All those other desires only find their place when these tripartite motivations are in place. If you have not written it, I will recap it again. You have to write it. Number one, your love and your passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. You must love Jesus with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That's what Jesus taught. You must love him more than fame, more than increase. You must love him more than ministry. Your love for him is what should motivate your fasting. Your love for him is what should motivate your Bible study. Your love for him is what should motivate your opening the church. Is what should motivate your giving. Your love for him is what should motivate your desire to be known. To give you a greater opportunity to reveal his love. And then number two, to see him glorified. To see him glorified. To see him glorified and let me tell you the truth if you desire to see jesus glorified it will cost you your own reputation there are times you will have to choose between you lifted and him lifted i pray that when life offers you those options in a hurry and without thinking twice you will say like john the baptist that i may increase so that he will that i may decrease so that he will increase Jesus glorified. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, in my life, be glorified. one your love for Jesus number two your desire to see him glorified number three your desire to be a blessing to others can I tell you one of the noblest way to live is to make your life count as far as adding value to lives are concerned people don't care what you know until they know how much you care 
people don't care whether you pray or fast or speak Greek or Hebrew they don't care whether you are Apostle Joshua Selman they don't care whether it is koinonia once it is an oasis spilling out the river of love passion hope that someone can come to you when they are discouraged and say I knew that if I meet you my life will change I knew that if I meet you my business will change that your life will become is it's like it's like an oasis in the desert people can run to you and come and say listen let us come to the house of God it is my prayer for koinonia that it will not just be that this is a place of revelation or this is a place of power miracles healing thank God for all of these things the noblest testimony that I desire, not only for my life, but for this great ministry that God has so highly honored, is that we love Jesus Christ passionately and truly, that our desire is to see him revealed and glorified from this nation to the ends of the earth. And then finally, to see that within the time that God has given us, the privilege of life, we are able to impact people I am very global in my thinking, but God is giving me a new orientation. I am very personal right now in my impact. As much as I think globally, I talk to the family. My joy is one life at a time. Trying to change 5,000 people at once is going to waste your time. Converge your energy and change one person and you have affected 5,000 people in one person. There are many people who want to change the world and they've not changed their own families. There are, have you seen that? Historically, there are people like that, preachers. Their own families can be dying, dying of hunger, dying of whatever it is, and they are changing the whole world. You change the world by changing a life. And let me tell you this, especially for our generation that is obsessed with increase, we want to show that many, many people have been impacted. I submit to you as one who has been privileged to experience different levels of increase and honor. I can tell you with every sense of humility, at the end of your life, it's not a crowd that will clap for you. It's the life that has been changed that will remember you. A crowd is a big risk. They will clap for you and say crucify him the next moment. But one life you